Rick Bayless, and I've been exploring, cooking, and eating in Mexico for over 40 years. Now I'm taking you to Mexico City for a deep dive into the classic dishes you've asked to learn. It's time to share my best recipes ever. Chicken soup, no matter where you are in the world, just sets everything right. And in every Mexican kitchen, you'll find chicken broth and maybe some leftover tortillas that you could slice and fry up to a nice crunchiness. And you're halfway to sopa de tortilla, to tortilla soup. All you need to do is add those specific ingredients that really make it Mexican, especially chili. Now I've brought you to this place. It's called La Corte, a kind of diner behind the National Palace in the oldest part of Mexico City because I love what they do with tortilla soup. They weave in the classic flavors of roasted tomato and epazote and uh, they put puya chili, a kind of biting chili in there. Top it all off with a spoonful of crema, a little fresh cheese, some slices of avocado. And this turns chicken soup into a celebration. Tortilla soup can be part of just everyday eating, or it can be part of a beautifully elegant meal, like the way that they serve it here at San Angel Inn. This place has been here since the 60s in an old converted hacienda. And what you have to understand about soup in a Mexican meal is that nobody thinks they've had a proper meal unless they've had a soup to start it all out. And what they do here is to take that sort of ordinary tortilla soup and make it into a complete show. They have all of the garnishes setting out so that you can put as much or as little of each one of them on your soup as possible. Of course, it starts with the tomatoey broth over the crisp fried tortillas. And then onto that went the avocado and then the chicharron, the crispy pork skin that's gonna soften in the broth a little bit. The cream, the cheese, the chili, all of that making this into what I think is quite a show. Muchas gracias, señor. Se ve excelente. Gracias. Okay, so I have brought you to my favorite Mexican cheese stall in the San Juan Market in downtown Mexico City to do a little show and tell on cream and cheese for tortilla soup. So let's start with the cream here. And this is the absolute best choice. This is crema de rancho from uh, right outside of Mexico City. And when you look at it, it's got this smooth, beautiful, texture to it and this incredible sheen mm. and then you eat it wow it's so complex now you would think sour cream when you see something like this in the United States but this is not sour cream richer in texture nuttier not as sour oh man it just adds so much complexity to a great tortilla soup now, cheese that is typically used for the sopa de tortilla would be a queso fresco, a fresh cheese. And I've got a small round of it here. Usually, they are small rounds because it's a cottage production. It's made on a small ranch. And it's a very simple cheese. 
always freshly made, never aged. It's got a milky taste to it and a kind of crumbly texture. It's a very, very simple cheese, either acid set or rennet set, but very simple to make. Now, if you wanted to have a melting cheese in your sopa de tortilla, then the best choice would be queso chihuahua. Chihuahua cheese from the northern part of Mexico made by the Mennonites. You can see that this is a, a cloth bound round of it. And what this is going to add to your soup flavor-wise is richness and complexity, much more so than say a shredded Monterey Jack that would be our typical substitute in the United States. When a lot of people travel from the U.S. to Mexico and they taste that beautiful crema that is spooned on all kinds of dishes, they immediately think sour cream. But Mexican crema is quite different than American sour cream. Well, for one thing, American sour cream is way tangier. It's way more acidic. Secondly, most American sour cream is way less rich meaning that it's made with milk and some stabilizers. And when you add it to dishes, oftentimes, well, it can just curdle in those dishes. So if you want to make something that's much more like the Mexican crema, you need to start with heavy cream and then culture it yourself. If you use buttermilk for the culture, then you're gonna get that deep, rich nuttiness to the cream that you've cultured. It's very, very easy to make. The first thing that you do is to put a pot over about a medium low heat, and then you pour your cream into it. Warm that cream up to just about 100 degrees or so, basically a little warmer than body temperature. Then for every two cups of cream, add a half a cup of active culture buttermilk. Turn off the fire and pour it into a jar. I'm gonna set the top on it, but I'm not gonna screw the lid shut. I'm gonna let this set for 12 hours at room temperature. This is sort of like making yogurt. And then I'll put it into the refrigerator and it needs at least four hours in the refrigerator to firm up. I really think it's best if you let it sit overnight. The first time that I tasted milk from this small local dairy, I was just amazed because, I mean, I had been drinking milk all my life, but this tasted like, well, I guess what I would call old fashioned milk. It had so much richness and complexity. And that's when I decided that I wanted to capture that flavor in some fresh cheese, the way that they make queso fresco in Mexico. And I discovered that the easiest way was what they call the acid set method. You simply bring milk to about 190 degrees. So it's not yet at the boiling temperature, but it's going to be uh, very steamy looking. And then you add some acid to it that could be citric acid or it could be lime juice and it'll just curdle now I add one layer of complexity to that I have a gallon of milk here in front of me and I put a couple of cups of buttermilk in here to start with and I let it sit for a few hours just to see if I can get a little bit more rich tanginess in the flavor by culturing my milk with buttermilk so I've got some citric acid here. You can find it easily in most grocery stores or in pharmacies. Sometimes it's called sour salt. I've got a teaspoon of it here. It doesn't take very much to make this whole gallon of milk into cheese. I'm gonna just use my finger to dissolve it in a little bit of water. And then I'm going to dribble it all over this pot. Now immediately, you will start to see some curds form because it's the acid that is separating the curds from the whey or encouraging that to happen. So I'm gonna turn the temperature off now. I've got it at my 190 degrees. Give it just a very gentle stir to get things started here and then just let it sit for five minutes. Now I've got a skimmer like this that's going to collect the curds for me here. And you'll see that when I bring them up, they separate immediately from the whey. The whey will look sort of watery, but kind of milky watery. And then I'm gonna lay them into a colander that is lined with cheesecloth. 
Okay, now what you're gonna have in front of you now looks a lot like cottage cheese. <laughs> Not the creamed cottage cheese, but the, the base of cottage cheese, because this is essentially what you have just made here. I wanna compact it some and get some more of the whey out. So I'm going to pull all of the sides of the, the cloth up here. You can see all of that whey separating out of it there. Now I'm gonna put some salt onto this and mix it in with my fingers. It'll be kind of warm. You may wanna do this with a spoon but I like to actually work that salt in with my fingers like that. Then collect it all up together. Squeeze out enough of the whey that you can make a kind of compact ball, but I don't wanna compact it so much that all I could do is crumble it. Now it's gotta cool off completely. That'll take at least a couple of hours in the refrigerator. But truth be told, it's best if you could let it set four to six hours. Typically, when you're making soup, it will be as good as the quality of the broth that you start with. But a lot of us just turn to store-bought broth these days because we just don't take the time to tend a simmering pot for four to six hours, which is what it usually takes to extract all that good flavor. Now, of course, the slow cooker has helped us a lot with that because you don't have to tend it much. But I know a lot of you have electric pressure cookers these days. And to tell you the truth, that's the fastest way to the best broth. So I'm gonna make a chicken broth in Mexican style, which means it's not gonna have celery and carrots in it. And you can use any kind of chicken parts that you want. So oftentimes I will make my chicken broth with legs and thighs these days. That's what I have on this tray right here. Now you really do need some meaty pieces to make a really good broth with. If it's just bony, it's going to be a lighter flavor. So we'll combine all of these into the pot. I've already filled it half full with the water. Roughly chop an onion and put that into the pot along with some garlic cloves cut in half, some bay leaves and thyme, salt and vinegar. Then the top gets secured. You're gonna move it from venting to sealing. That's what traps all of the pressure in there. Then I'm going to press pressure cook and it's automatically set at an hour, which is exactly what I need for cooking this chicken broth. When the hour is up, release the steam from the machine. I like to protect my hand with a towel. Then remove the chicken pieces and pour the liquid through a strainer so that you just have that delicious broth left. And now we're ready to make soup. So tortilla soup is always topped with crisp fried tortillas. And if you wanna make the best ever version of that soup, you're probably gonna to wanna to fry your own tortillas until they're crispy. If you're in a hurry, you could just buy tortilla chips and then crumble those over the soup. And I've certainly done that before. But what I've done here is to slice into about half inch thick strips, uh, a handful of tortillas and then put them into the hot oil. It has to be quite hot so that I could fry them until they're really, really crispy. I'm gonna use this oil for something else in just a second, but I wanna actually pour off most of it I've left just um, a kind of heavy coating of oil on the bottom of the pan because I'm gonna use it to toast chilies. Now in Central Mexico, the pasilla chili is the one that is used to flavor the broth and then to sprinkle over the top of the tortilla soup. Some people don't put it in the broth. I really like it that way. So I'm gonna prepare these by tearing the little stem off and then tearing them open and shaking out the seeds. You want to pull the veins out of there as well and then tear them into large pieces. Toast the chili pieces in the hot oil. It'll only take about 35, 45 seconds for them to lighten in color and fill the kitchen with that delicious aroma. Then chop an onion and have some garlic cloves. 
saute all that in the same pan. Stir it around for seven or eight minutes until the onion starts to caramelize. Add that to the blender jar along with a can of fire roasted tomatoes and about half of your crispy toasted chilies. Blend it all together until it's as smooth as you can get it. Then heat a bit more oil in your pan and when it's hot, Add that mixture and cook it down until it reduces, darkens, and thickens. This looks perfect right now, so it's time to add the chicken broth to it. And then I'll put in some episote from the garden, and I'm going to put it over about a medium to medium low heat. Let it simmer here for about 30 minutes or so. When that time is up, I'll taste it, season it with salt, and slide in some cubed chicken breast. You don't have to put that in, but if you have it and want to make a much more hearty soup out of this sopa de tortilla, chicken's the way to go. And then with this pot over a medium heat, a gentle simmer, in about 10 minutes, we'll be ready to serve. Boy, you could really smell that episote in here. First thing that I'm gonna do is put a spoonful of our homemade crema in there. A few cubes of the homemade queso fresco. The next thing that's gonna go in is the crispy fried tortilla strips. Next, a few pieces of avocado. And then a crumbled chili over the top of it. I like to serve it with a wedge of lime on the side and you've got an amazing tortilla soup. You've heard me talk a lot about epazote, that kind of pungent herb that is used so extensively in central and southern Mexico. Without it, it's hard to get a traditional flavor in a lot of the Mexican dishes. Well, this is what it looks like when it's growing. And you can see that I have it growing here in a pot, which is what I recommend that you do too. Because in the fall, as you can see, it will start to go to seed. Seed pods are forming up and down the stalks here. And when those seed pods are mature, the wind will just blow them and, well, you'll find episote sprouting up everywhere through your yard. But containing it in a pot like this, I can watch that maturity and then I can just cut this all down before the seed pods start to fly. Now, when you sow episote seeds in a pot like this, just make sure that you put the pot in a really sunny spot. It doesn't want too much water. It doesn't want too much fertilizer, but it will bring amazing traditional flavor to a lot of your cooking. For my next dish, I want a really rich meat broth. Now, meat broth takes about twice as long in the electric pressure cooker as a chicken broth does. And so I'm gonna cook this one in two stages. And I'm gonna start with short rib. You've probably fallen in love with short rib because it's one of the moistest, most delicious meaty cuts that there is. These are cut what is called flanken style, meaning that we're cutting directly across the bone rather than with the bone. I've got my water in the pot and I'm going to slide all of these flank and cut short ribs into the water. And the aromatics are the same as for the chicken broth. We have the onion, garlic, bay leaf, and thyme. I'm gonna slide those right into the pot. We'll add the salt and the vinegar. Secure the lid, set for an hour. Just as with the chicken broth, when the hour is done, release the steam on the pressure cooker. Then remove the cooked meat and bones. Mm -hmm. 
The meat is perfectly cooked right now, but the broth could use a little more richness as beef broths take a little bit more time. So I'm gonna separate out all of the meat and then return everything else, the bones and the vegetables, to the pot for another hour. When the weather turns cool, I like to make a really hearty version of tortilla soup with short ribs. The first steps are all exactly the same as the classic one. The first thing that I do is to fry the tortilla strips until they're really crispy. Then in that same pan, after I've poured the oil out, I toast the chili. I like to add a little extra chili because it goes so well with the short ribs. Then I cut up an onion, some garlic cloves, and I saute them in that pan until they're beautifully browned. I combine the sauteed onion and garlic in the blender jar with a can of fire roasted tomatoes and about half those chilies. And then I blend it until it's completely smooth. And then I cook that blended mixture down. That's all concentrated and cooked down now to make this a little more distinctive in flavor and to match the richness of the short rib, I'm going to make a mixture here of cumin and black pepper and oregano. Yeah, that's about the right amount. And I'm gonna crush them in this little molcajete, this little mortar. Wow, that, that is a, an aroma that really transports me right back to Northern Mexico. All right, stir all of that in. Then we have our short rib broth here. I'm going to pour into the cook down base. Stir that up. I'm going to add the short rib, the meat that we took off of those bones, to the pot now. And let that come up to a simmer for well, about 20 or 30 minutes. Instead of that homemade crema, I have a little thinned out Greek yogurt that I think is gonna be dynamite with this. Instead of the homemade queso fresco, the fresh cheese, I've got a little bit of crumbled feta. You could use goat cheese here too if you would like. Then I'm going to put on little strips of tortilla some avocado pieces. I think they add a beautiful creaminess to the broth. Crumble on a little bit of that toasted pasilla chili. Then a sprinkling of chopped cilantro over the whole thing. And a wedge of lime. That's a hearty and delicious wintertime meal.
Okay, so I fired up your appetite. Some of my favorite dishes, entertaining tips, and Mexican travel inspirations. Well, now I want to hear what you have to say. Visit us at rickbayless.com slash TV for recipes and a whole lot more.